that one? Well, good morning, everyone. It is nine o'clock, and uh, I want to welcome all of you here. Thank you for coming again this morning. We have some new people today. We're glad to have you with us this morning. All the way from uh, Kansas, right? All right. Well, I think everybody else is here. I didn't check as you came in, but we're glad you're here. I hope you had a good night of rest. Um, and, and if you look around, you will notice that the, those who took the test did survive. <laughs> they were sweating it out towards the end when they came to the extra, uh, the tiebreaker questions because I made them intentionally hard. The test took them about, how long would you say, about seven to ten minutes? <laughs> and the tiebreaker maybe took them 20 minutes, some of them. But anyway, uh, I haven't graded them yet. I've checked a few, and I actually found I threw a few difficult ones in and uh, stumped some early on before the tiebreaker. So you might not even come down to those tiebreaker questions. If that makes you feel any better, those of you who had to deal with that. So, well, we're glad you're here. Let us, um, let's begin with prayer, and then we will uh, open with some singing. I'm going to actually put my mic on today. Let's see if this works. I realized that when I was reading the questions, that may not have actually come through real clearly to some of the quizzers. So we want to make sure today that that's not the case. Is this, can you hear me? Or is that not working? What's that? I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'll try and <clears throat> speak loudly. All right. Well, let's let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty Father, we are grateful for another day. Lord, your word says that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for being our God. Thank you that we can gather today around your word, which is living and powerful. Lord, thank you that we can worship Jesus Christ. We can learn about him in this book that you have given to us, Lord. And I pray that every one of us here would treasure it up in our hearts all of our lives. Lord. Thank you that we can be in your service and I pray that you would use us even today as we go out and, and just seek to share the gospel with those at the park. Father, I pray that you would help us to honor you as we lift up your word this morning. Lord, we love you and praise you. And we look forward to that day when Jesus comes. We're so thankful for his precious blood that was shed and that he rose from the dead. And we ask all these things for the glory and honor of Christ. Amen. All right. Elia, I don't see her. There she is. All right. I think we've got this thanks to Joey. We've got the slides working today. So let's stand up and we will sing, O oh, Church Arise. Oh, <laughs> 
sing out loud for you. So can she play through it? Yeah, once? she's gonna play through it once first. Let me put some words up here. I'll try and put the words as we go. second time. Hopefully by then you'll we'll have this done. Thank you, perfect in every good word. 
shepherd of the sheep. All right, we're going to do one more. We did this last night, and we, you know, the first time we did it, I didn't hear the amen nearly as well as the second time, okay? So, here we go. The grow in grace. 2 Peter 3.18. This is our desire as Christians, right? To grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ.
again, like to welcome all of you here today for uh, day number two. Wasn't it great to hear the entire book of Hebrews recited from memory yes. last night? And today we have more. Uh, we're going to hear, uh, after we do our scripture challenge round, number two, uh, we are going to hear recitations from Hebrews 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to have those young people who came up and recited Hebrews 11. We're going to do that again. And then we're just going to work our way through the story. So in the 10 o'clock hour, we're going to do uh, eight of the stories. And then we'll take our break. And then at 11 o'clock hour, we'll do the remaining eight of our stories. And then we'll have lunch, have teaching that I'm really excited about, especially now that I have the overhead working. It will help. Uh, teaching on the two covenants in the book of Hebrews. So... But I realized last night that I forgot to do something. Does anyone know what that was? The prize, huh? the prize box. I, I forgot the prize box. Oh. So, you know, I realized that we have a little bit of a imbalance here. My wife pointed this out to me that, you know, last year we were giving, you know, we, we draw a prize and you won money. You won a gift card and you didn't have to do anything. <laughs> And, uh, and then you've got all these people who had to memorize the entire book of Hebrews, eight of them. Let's give them a round of applause for that. Stand up if you quoted through the entire book of Hebrews over the last four months. All right. Thank you. From memory. And then this morning, as you know, they took a test over the book of Hebrews. And it was grueling. One person came out pretty quickly. The rest stayed almost to the end of 30 minutes. Um, so anyway, I'll be tallying up those scores and we'll be announcing the winners after lunch, sometime after lunch, and handing out prizes. Someone may win up to $200. You've already won 50. Some have already made 100. Someone's going to win potentially up to 200. So uh, but we didn't do our prizes. So all of that to say, $50 to memorize the whole book of Hebrews, and then you get a prize because your name was drawn? That's not that's not very balanced, is it? So what we're going to do is we've got our, our wheel. Last year, you got a, a candy bar, a little candy bar, if you, if you spun the wheel and you could quote a verse. Remember that? But we didn't have anyone at the wheel. So here's what we're going to do today. I need um, someone to... Someone back there uh, could get me the prize box. Oh, Shane's going to grab me the prize box, and I'm going to have someone draw a name, and then here's what's going to happen. You will have the opportunity to say pass or play, okay? And if you, if you play, what happens is you come up in front of all of us, and you spin the wheel, just like this. And depending on where it lands, you have to do what the wheel says. And if you do that, then you get a $10 gift card to Walmart. Okay? Everyone can spend money at Walmart, right? Okay, so. Now, let me tell you what's on here, because that might scare you, right? <laughs> you have to quote all the books of the Bible is where I am. Now, that doesn't mean you have to recite the whole story you know, every verse in the book. When I had my prison ministry, I told the guys when they got out of prison, they'd come to our program and that they had to quote, well, the first thing that they did was they had to learn all the books of the Bible. They had to quote them all. And they're like, I can't even learn one verse. How am I going to learn the whole Bible? I'm like, no, no, just the name of the books, okay? Uh, but we've got a, a verse from Proverbs, Old Testament verse, a gospel verse, John 3, 16, John 1, 1, Psalm 23. Okay, just different ones. So you will have the opportunity to pass or play. And since I didn't do it last night, we're going to do two right now, two drawings right now. So I'm going to stir these up a little bit. Yep, I'm going to have you just reach up there, draw a name, and hand it to me. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Karis Mayo. All right, so do you want to pass or play? She'll play, okay. 
got it's got to go around once all the way. Okay. Um, yes, it did because it was there. John three sixteen. Now, see, whenever I play these games, where you know, especially when you've been a pastor and you get something that everybody knows, and you're like, oh no, it's really embarrassing. But John three sixteen. You want to go ahead and try that okay. for us? Does somebody have an ask you? Uh, we'll. I will. Oh, we'll, I don't we'll, 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 we'll go with what you okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. There you go. All right. That was good. Okay, we got one more right now. I wish I could just, like, do this all day. I don't know what she's about. Are you one of those people that you're really optimistic when the drawing happens and you think, maybe today is the day? Yes. And it never happens, right? All right. Ellie Cross. <laughs> that was not planned. That was not planned. Okay, come on up. You want to pass or play? You want to play, okay. Now, if she doesn't get it, now that's not saying you won't, but if you don't, then we get to draw again. All right, so spin it. It's got to go around at least once. Just grab on there and just... There you go. A New Testament verse. So you get to pick any verse in the New Testament to recite it for us. John 3.16. This is... That's smart. This is... King James? Yes. Okay. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he shall ever believe in him should have everlasting life. Wait, what should not perish but have everlasting life? Very good. Okay. All right. There you go. Very good job. Okay. We'll pull this out once more a little bit later. If I forget, you remind me. All right. And your names are out of the box now, so you don't get another shot at that. Um, okay, here's what we're going to do. I need those who are, are quizzing. Um, we are going to do round two. And then after we do round two, we'll have a brief break. And then we'll come back and we'll do our recitations from uh, Hebrews 11. So anyone who's on who's in the game, who's who's... Quizzing. Come on up. We'll separate the tables here. Watch the cord. Don't trip on the cord, please. Come on, Lucas. Listen up. Uh, 
Okay, well, let me have your attention. I have one other quick announcement. So there are papers and flyers on the back tables that are from the church that's letting us use their and, and in the pews. Please leave those. And if you see one laying on the ground, put it back. Don't use these as like scratch paper. Make sure the children don't use these up. So uh, just be aware of that. Okay, now we did get the scoreboard working. And let me explain it because it's a little bit, it can be confusing. So right now, here's our scores. Team one, Let me just review the rules real quickly for everyone who uh, wasn't here yesterday, or if you happen to forget what the rules are. Is it going to work? Oh, it works. Since my mic is not working, I will speak up so that you can all hear me. All right, scripture challenge rounds. Let's see. From the beginning. All right. So we have two rounds left, plus the rapid fire round later this afternoon. Then we have seven categories in each round. Remember, there's five questions per category. Point values increase, just like last night, and you lose points if you get it wrong. Next, buzzing out. There has been a change. The, the judge has made a decision, and it's okay, because I say I get the final authority lesson. Okay, let me, let me go through the, the buzzing out change. Anyone on the team can answer. I think team one knows where this is going. Yeah, you guys always put a, put a handicap on Elias. If two wrong answers by a teammate, they sit out the rest of that category, okay? Whoever did the best on the team last night has to sit out the whole round with all the rounds. No, no. <laughs> round two and three, you get a maximum of two correct instead of three. So we lowered that just once. <laughs> all, all of the rounds. Round two and three, maximum of two correct. Buzzing in, same as last night. Once your team buzzes in, no consulting. You can consult before you buzz in. If wrong answers, team can't buzz again on the same question. And you have five seconds to answer after buzzing. How to qualify. Total of three rounds in rapid fire after rounds two, one versus four, two versus three. So it doesn't matter who's in first. If you can get uh, to second or third or second, you just don't want to be in fourth because then you have to go head to head with team one, right? All right. <laughs> Rapid fire, the losers of round three play for third and fourth place, and the winners play for first and second. Remember the prizes, small, emphasis small, a little bigger, a little bigger, and a bonus prize that only my wife knows about right now. Here's the score. Um, forget that. 
Here's the score over here. 1900, team two, 725, team four, 50, and team three, zero. But, but really ready to make your move. Yeah. Okay? Seven categories. Name that chapter. Who did that? Places, please. Hall of Faith. Names, titles, descriptions of Jesus. Where'd that come from? And the general knowledge. Are you ready? We're going to do a buzzer check. We're going to do a buzzer check. Make sure you have your buzzers on. I'm going to go around and we're going to start with team number four to start with today. Okay, wait one until I started here. Okay, team four, go ahead. Got it? Team three. Team three. Okay, let me start it again. Try it again. There we go. Team two. Ready? Team one. Nope. Four hit it. Don't hit it again. Team one. Got it. Okay, we're all ready. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Round two. Name that chapter. I'll give you a word or phrase. You give me the chapter number where it is found. King of Salem. Three. Seven. Seven is correct. Oh, yeah. On the board. <laughs> All right. Next question. Mary. Team four. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13. That's worth 25 points. Next question. Ark of the Covenant. Team one. Nine. Nine is correct. Okay. Next question. Shadow of Heaven. Team three. Um, eight. Eight is correct. <laughs> All right. They've moved up to last place with 50 points. Okay. Last question in the that chapter. Lower than the angel. One. Two. Two is correct. Two is correct. All right. Good job. You can see the scoreboard. We won't read it after every round. Here we go. Who did that? Who did that? I will tell you what they did. You tell me who they are. This person is called a brother. Four. That is incorrect. Uh, I'm starting it right now. Team two. Timothy. Timothy is called a brother. Our brother. Okay. Our brother Timothy. Okay. Next question. This person sat down at the right. Team one. Jesus. Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. Next question. This person didn't know where he was going. Number three. Answer, please. No answer. Okay, try again. Here we go. Number two. Abraham. Abraham. Remember, he didn't know where he was going. Okay. Okay, okay here we go. Next question. This person blessed Jacob, team three. Um, Answer, please. Isaac. Isaac is correct. Okay. All right. Here we go. For 50 points. This person was hid three. He, Moses. Moses was hid three months. All right. What team was that? That was team one. And they got... 50 points for that. Now, now we're up to 75 points. Okay. And yes, no one, it's in the same round. So Elliot can stay in, and anyone who got two can stay in for the next five questions. Okay, here we go. Can you all hear me okay? Can you all hear me as well? Okay. All right. I will describe a place. You will tell me where or what it is. All right. Salutations or greetings were sent. Team four. Italy. Italy is correct. Sent from this place. Okay. This is the place where Melchizedek 
Team one. King of Salem. King of Salem. Is that correct? That is correct. Team three got our 75. Oh, team three got the 75. We oh, take sorry. 75 away from three and give it to four. <laughs> it's a little confusing because it moves around. Yeah. So. Okay. And then team four. See how it just jumps up there? Isn't that neat? Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, here's the next question. This is the place Abraham departed when he was team four. That is correct. When he was 75 years old. Team four gets 75 points. Okay. Multiple answers here. You ready? What four places did those of whom the world was not Team one. Deserts, mountains, dens, and caves of the earth. That is correct for 75 points for team one. All right, next question. Last one in the places, please, category. This is the specific place where the Ark of the Covenant was team three. The most holy place. The most holy place. That is correct. Could have been holiest of all, a holy of holy, or most holy place. Okay. All right. So we're we're all on the board here. Let's go another round, and then we'll check the scores. This is Paul of Faith. These are questions from Hebrews 11. The Hall of Faith. What is it impossible to uh, one? To please God without faith. That is correct. To please God without faith. Next question. By building an ark, no. Nope. Team three. He condemned the world and became an error. He condemned it. That's right. What did he do to the world? He condemned it. Okay, very good. <laughs> Team three got a uh, hundred points. And oh, we have a tie for last place. Yes. <laughs> okay. Third place. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Okay. Next question. Three men are mentioned by name in Hebrews eleven. Name two of them. Number four. Uh, that is correct. Now, that was a bad question. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I must have had the wrong chapter there. But nevertheless, you, you got it. So, all right, that's worth 100 points. That was an easy one. Okay. Ready? Here goes. What were Moses' parents not? Team one. Uh, they were not afraid of King Eden. That's right. King's Commander Eden. 100 points. And the last question in Hall of Faith is Moses chose chose Team 4. That is incorrect. I'll continue reading the question. Moses chose to suffer be mistreated they rather than. They they okay. With the people of God, they enter into Okay. Pleasures of sin. I heard it. That is correct. Okay. Team two. Team two got one hundred points. Okay. So they get 100 points for that. Team two. Okay. Are we ready? Let's keep going here. Oh, oh well. Here we go. This is. Names, titles, descriptions of Jesus worth 150 points. I'll give you a chapter or verse. You give me the name or title of Jesus found in that verse. And uh, you might want to listen to the question because there are some titles, as we found last night, that might appear in this place. And I might be a little more particular today. I'm going to actually give you the reference, which might 
be all you need, and then I mean, we get the point anyway. Are you ready? I'm going to talk quick. Three, one. We consider. Yeah. Apostle High Priest American Confession. There is. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus has gone entered as a uh, uh, that is incorrect. Team three. Forerunner. Forerunner. That is <laughs> Answer. Team one. Nope, nope. Okay, let me finish if you want. Team one lost 100. Well, we got to keep them going. 150. 150. Well, Team two. Okay, we got it. Mediator. Jesus is the mediator. Team, is team two just got 150 points. Okay? All right. Question number four. How is Jesus described in Hebrews 38? Team 1. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is correct. Okay, are you out now? No, I'm not. You only got one. Okay. So we got Team 1, got 150. Okay, last question in this category. Listen carefully. 8 1. Seated at the right hand of the throne of Majesty in heaven. Uh, a minister in the holy places in the truth that the Lord is not made. That is incorrect. Go, go ahead. Uh, I'll finish reading until I see a buzz. Seated at the right hand of the throne of majesty, Jesus is team four. Such a high priest. High priest, that is correct. Okay. That is 150 points to team four. Okay. All right, so looking at the scores, I'll read them. Team one, 2400. Team 2, 1025, Team 3, 525, and Team 4, 225. You didn't subtract the points for Team 1. Yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> he did. He did. Did you take that out? I, I think he did. I did. did. Okay. I did. Okay. All right. Moving on. Next category is where did that come from? I will give you. Okay. Bye. Listen, everybody. Okay. Start over. Okay. Where did that come from? I'll give you a phrase from Hebrews. You tell me the Old Testament passage, where it's taken from. And remember, there is a little range that you have, um, but it's got to be in, within the range of what was from the passage. It's not like, you know, you could just say, chapter this in this book. No, it's got to be closer than that. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yes. Will you check my chart, brother, for me? She's yes, go ahead. Team 3, chat. Oh, it's good. It's fine. It's not linking. Okay. Hit, hit the buzzer there. Okay, yep. All right, here we go. Where did that come from? Five questions we've got here. These are worth 200 points apiece. Now it's time to make the move. 113, sit at my right. Psalm 110.1. That is correct. Psalm 1, sit at my right hand. Team 1 got 200 points. But I think our enemies a footstool. Yes. I do think Corbin was right. Because we got one wrong, okay. and then we got one right, and then we got another one Okay, wrong. well, they want to take 150 off? No, I'm getting to 100 or 150? Give us 50 more. I think it's 500. No, no, no. Wait, take away or give? Yeah, because take away 150, and then give us 200. So just add 50. Uh, we're going to keep it as it is. We can't go back. We're going to have to keep it right where it is. Here we go. Next question. Are you ready? 1-5. You are my son. Psalm 2 7. Psalm 2 7. Today I haven't gotten you. Very good. You got them both. 4 4. God rested on the seventh. 
Seek one. Genesis 2-2. Genesis 2-2. Two, two. Rest on the seventh day from all his works. Okay. Next. 8-10. For this is the covenant. Keep Jeremiah 31. 31 to 31. That is correct. Jeremiah 31. Okay. Last one in this round. Worth 200. That was Keep 4. Okay. 3 7. Today, if you hear his. Team 2. Psalm 95 7 through 11. That is correct. So, if you hear his voice. Psalm 95. All right. All right. So, it's, it's really anyone's game here. You can, you can move up. Uh, so, here we go. We'll, we'll read the scores after the last round here. Back to the basics. These are general knowledge questions from the book of Hebrews. Ready? What did Jesus learn in Hebrew? Team three. Obedience. He learned obedience. In ah. And how did he learn it? Through, through suffering. suffering. Jesus learned obedience through suffering. Isn't that an amazing thought? How do we think we're going to learn it apart from suffering, yeah. right? Okay. That's why we can give thanks even in suffering and rejoice in our trials. Uh, can you read that, please? Yeah, I'll do Okay. Here we go. What two things are necessary to see Team 3? Not answer, please. Uh, no, okay. Again, what two things are necessary in Hebrews to see the Lord according to 1214? Team 2. Strive for peace, with, uh, peace and holiness. Peace and holiness, that is correct. That is worth 250 points for Team 2. Okay. Here we go. In Hebrews 5 9, Jesus is called the author, source of all people. Obey him. Obey him, that all that do what? Obey him. See, now if you don't really give careful attention to context and to the whole of the Bible, you might think, well, this is teaching a work of salvation. But it isn't. It isn't. The Bible is clear. It's through faith in Jesus Christ, right? That's what the book is about here. Okay. How is God described in Hebrews 12.29? Deep 4. Consuming fire. Consuming fire. Worth 250 points. Ooh, this is close down there for third place. And our last question from the category. Everybody ready? I'm going to reset. Here we go. Last question. Shedding of blood is necessary. And not shedding blood makes no forgiveness of sins. No forgiveness of sins. Yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and get our score. We'll start in first place. D1, 3,050. Team 2, 1,475. Team 4 is 8. 25. Team 3 is 725. So that means that this afternoon, when we're done with all our reciting, which we're going to do with Hebrews 11 stories after our break now, that means Team 1 will play Team 2. Team, I'm sorry, 1 will play 3, 2 will play 4 to get to the top tier in the in the uh, play, rapid play, fire. Play, so what that means is when we come back later, uh, team two and team four will be on the stage. Listen, everybody listen. Team two and team four will be on the stage. There will only be two tables. Team one and team three will go out of the building. And then we'll have the same questions. Then one and three will come back. And then the winners of those rounds will play each other in the rapid fight. So, okay, go, uh, we have a 10 minute break right here. So feel free to uh, use the restroom. The restrooms are right back when you came in. And we'll see you back in 10 minutes at 10 o'clock to start our recitations. We are on YouTube. We are on YouTube right now. <laughs> okay.
Oh, can I have a couple of unhand these tables again? I forgot about that. Put them in the back there. Oh, I have to. Oh, that's your Okay, now I moved I moved these computers around so that they wouldn't trip over yeah. them. <laughs> Okay, let's get started here. Okay. <coughs> okay, everyone, we um, when you come up to recite, please watch the cord. We, I don't want to connect this disconnect it because I don't want to lose the PowerPoint again. So just be careful. Um, so I'm excited about this next section because because we're going to hear a number of stories presented um, from Hebrews chapter 11. What we're going to do is we're going to have the young people that quoted Hebrews 11 last night come forward, and they're going to recite Hebrews 11 first. And then I'm just going to read basically the scripture that leads into the section, the story, and then the next group will come up one more time. Um, what we'll try and do, make sure you speak up, and we'll keep the microphone here in the front and try and get somewhat close to it. Although, if you're moving around or whatever, that's fine, we understand. Um, and then we have um, a, a, the story of Abraham um, is going to present, be presented with some visuals. 
and they're visuals you're all familiar with. And so I'm looking forward to that as well. So let's let's begin once again with prayer before we hear the word of God recited. And uh, ask the word of bless you. Almighty Father, again we thank you for our Lord and Jesus, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a what an amazing gift you have given us. Lord, we're thankful that Christ's sacrifice of his life and blood was the perfect sacrifice. He offered himself without blemish to you, and we are thankful. Thankful that by his death, through faith in him, we have life, eternal life. And as I prayed last night, Lord, would you have mercy upon any here today who do not know Christ? Lord, would you bring them to salvation? For the glory and honor of your Son, Lord, our desire is to lift up Jesus. And as we hear these Old Testament stories, to see that they all point to Jesus. And so, Lord, we love you. We thank you for our time together. We pray that as the word goes forth, we go forth in power, that your spirit will use it in our hearts. For the glory and honor of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Okay, now, one thing we're going to do, and I meant to ask a few people ahead of time, but I didn't. And so I'm going to put a couple of people on the spot. If you would be willing to, um, if you would be willing in this first section, I have, let's see, just a couple of stories here. And I'm going to need some volunteers to read, because we didn't get all of the stories filled. So I need... So I'm going to start with men who would be willing to read in, in two stories. So if you raise your hand, I need six men. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, five, I need one more, six. Okay, so I will give you a sheet when it's time for that story, and uh, we'll just try and we're going to go across the board. The there we've got like the narrator. So whoever, I'll, I'll assign that at the time, and I'll give you a sheet. You're just going to come up and read those stories, read the part that you have been given, since I don't have a... Um, now, I'm missing your, your live presentation. I must have moved, we must have moved the computer. You can, yes. I guess we shut it off. I didn't realize that. So... We have the creation, Abel, Enoch, Noah. I'm actually going to do a, a, a live or a video of a gentleman named Marquis Laughlin who goes to various churches and he recites books of the Bible. And so I found a clip from Noah. And since no one had claimed that, I thought I'd just play that for us. And you can see how he dramatizes that. Abraham, Sarah, Abraham, and Isaac. So... Um, let's have the young people who did Hebrews 11 last night come up and reset. And we're not going to use the candles tonight because it's more daylight and they wouldn't show up real well. So come on up. If you did Hebrews 11 last night, get us started with that. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old receive their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the Lord of God, so that what is seen was not made of the things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever will draw down to God must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed a house for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place 
that he was to receive as inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with them of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past that age. Since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, came descendants, as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand on the seashore. These, These all died in faith. Not having received the things promised. But having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they are strangers and exiles on the earth, for they that say such things are funny that they seek the country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a, a heavenly one. one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was being active on the earth of Isaac. Of whom it was said, Who are the Terry often be named? He considered that God was able to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob and Dine blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave directions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents. Because they saw that the child was beautiful, and they were not afraid of the king's eating. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refusing to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as he him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood. So that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians said to do, were dry. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not doubt for those who were disobedient, because she had him and of him belonging to his wives. And what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon. Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David, and Samuel, and the prophet. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, brought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, were made mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release, so that they might rise again into a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging, even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawed asunder. They were killed with the sword. They were about to get into sheep and goats. Destitute, uplifted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy. Wandering about in deserts and mountains, and in caves and into the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God has provided something, something better for us. That apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Hebrews 11. Great, great chapter. The first scriptorium we ever went to, it was a family, and they did that very thing through, I believe, the book. Is that right, Heather? They did the entire book. The family was part of that. It was very encouraging. That's where we got the idea from. Okay. Um, I'm going to read. Uh, each, before the, each group comes up, I'm going to read, come up and read a verse or two. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. Here's the story of creation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are invisible, or that are visible. <laughs> All right, real quick, I have a couple things to teach you that you guys can participate in this one with us. So there are multiple times in the story of creation that God sees what he's made, and he says that it was good. 
Um, so we, we would invite you guys to join us on that good. We'll try and give you kind of cues. So we'll be reciting and we'll say like, and God saw that it was good. good. And you guys can join us on that. So let's, let's practice that real quick. And God saw that it was good. good. Awesome. The other one, we have a little bit of improvised sign language we're going to use to keep track of the days. So we're all going to do, there was evening, and there was morning, and then whatever day, the first day, or the second day. So you guys can feel free to join with us if you want. Let's try that one time. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters to separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and, and there, there was morning, morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seeds. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, according to their kinds. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to its own kind, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth or to rule over the day and over the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and to give light upon the earth. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule over the day, and the lesser light to rule over the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, <laughs> and let birds fly above the earth, across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. So God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds. <laughs> and the livestock according to their kind, <laughs> and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there, there was, was evening and, and there, there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And God rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Genesis 1, 1 through 2, 3. By faith, Abel, offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. Shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and then whoever finds me will kill me. Then the Lord 
Oh. Uh, therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord said, I'm not going to Cain. Lest anyone find the Egyptian dead man. Now Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nile on the face of the dead. have good memories they have creativity just like the lord right what a creative god we have enoch by faith enoch was taken up so that he should not see death and he was not found because god had taken him now before he was taken he was commended as having pleased Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. <laughs> After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years. Enoch lived 365 years and walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. <laughs> now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying... Behold, a war comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. <laughs> And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became the, an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith.
Now, the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heavens have been closed, and the rain has stopped falling from the sky. The waters continue to recede until the seventh month, and on the seventeenth day of the seventh month, the tops of the, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Now, the waters continue to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. And after 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made, and he sent out a dove to see if the water receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could find no place to rest its feet, so it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. And this time, when it returned to him in the evening, there, in its beak, was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water receded from the surface of the ground. Then he waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark, but this time it did not return to him. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives with you. So Noah came out of the ark. Together with his wife and his sons and their wives, all the animals came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an altar there to the Lord and worshipped. The Lord was pleased and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of the man. Even though every inclination of the thoughts of his heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, cold and heat, Summer, winter, springtime, and harvest will never cease. Then the Lord said, See, I put my rainbow in the clouds. Whenever the rainbow appears, I will see it, and I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. This is a story of Abraham from Genesis 12, 1 through 9. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Genesis 12, 1 through 9. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country and your kindred and your mother's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram took Sarai his wife, and Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Lot, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place that took up to the Oak of Moriah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he moved to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. 
And there he built an altar to the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on, still going toward the Negev. Genesis 12, 1 to 9. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants, as many as the stars of the heaven, and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Fear not, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, Oh Lord God, what are you to give me? For I can be tribeless, and the heir of my house of Eleazar is Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the Lord said to This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. Look toward heaven and number the stars if you are able to number them. So shall your offspring be. And Abraham believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. The Lord said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? God said to Abraham, Abraham said to God, Behold, I am Oh, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. God said, No, but Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his offspring after me. As for Ishmael, I have heard, urged you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father twelve princes, and I will make him into a great nation. But I will establish my covenant with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year. They said to him, They said to him, Where is Sarah your wife? And she is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening as a gentle young angel. But Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way a woman had ceased to be with Sarah. So, so Sarah laughed to herself, saying, Happy, I'm not Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I do not laugh. 
Or she was afraid. He said, No, but you did buy. God visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord visited Sarah as he had promised. <laughs> received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who spake thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Abraham and Isaac. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. Everyone here? I think so. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham. And he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place which God had told him of. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac said unto Abraham, 
My father, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My God, our father will my God will supply the lamb for himself for the burnt offering. And so they went both of them together. When they had come to the place which God had told them of, Abraham built an altar and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him upon the, um, upon the altar upon the wood. And Abraham lifted up his, stretched forth his hand and, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thickets by its horns. And Abraham took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, that in doing this thing, in That thou hast done this say, and hath not withheld my son, mine only son, from me. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of the, his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Amen. And Ab Abraham returned unto his young men. And they rose up together and went to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelled in Beersheba. story of Isaac. And I'm going to have Don and Dan and Josiah. If you would come up here. Oh, and I'll have Corbin come as well. He will be the narrator. Isaac. <coughs> By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. Then his father Isaac said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him. And Isaac smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you and blessed be everyone who blesses you. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, then Jacob, 
when Jacob had scarcely gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. He also prepared delicious food and brought it to his father. And he said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that you may bless me. His father Isaac said to him, Who are you? He answered, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Then Isaac trembled very violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? And I ate it all before you came, and I have blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. As soon as Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out with an exceedingly great and bitter cry and said to his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully, and he has taken away your blessing. Esau said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me these two times, and took away my birthright. And behold, now he has taken away my blessing. Then he said, Have you not reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him Lord over you, and all his brothers I have given to him for servants. And with grain and wine I have sustained him. What then can I do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Then Isaac his father answered, and said to him, Behold, away from the fatness of the earth shall your dwelling be, and away from the dew of heaven on high. By your sword you shall live, and you shall serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you shall break his yoke from your neck. Okay, thank you everyone, that was encouraging. We have eight more stories to go, which we'll do after our break. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take about a 10 to 12 minute break. Um, I believe you can go into the fellowship area where we ate last night and we have some snacks out. So I will come in there and flip the lights on. And when I do that, just come back in if you're if you're still having a break. So let's take that break right now. How long? About 10 to 12 minutes. <laughs> Move with my back. Yep, and then everything can take place in front of her because that's where the class is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you can move the whole stage too, and that that kind of thing. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to see if it fits? Because it's too big for me. You can just have it. I'm all good. I think that'll be perfect. I'm. I'm gonna show up to church on Sunday, and this is gonna and everybody's gonna look. But yeah, okay, they kept falling off on me. So <laughs> that is fantastic. That is fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh man, <laughs> this is great. Thank you. Well. 
feel free to get a snack, anyone, if you'd like to. So if they're coming from this side, Lots of creativity and, and then you take the front one. What a blessing. Back. Yeah, so that So then, so they're working from that way this way. Uh -huh. And then that's what we have to do. We have to have the Egyptians come in and we're like the right. But that's the thing. It says like, and the Egyptians go in and and they drive cars and we clog them with wheels. And so they're doing that for a while. And then, uh, and then the waters come back over them. And then later it says, so the waters came back over them and they were dead on the sea. Like it says, and well, the, so the first time it says that the waters were over them. The second time it says that they're just dead on the sea shore. Okay. Like it's to show that they're dead. Yeah. Okay. And then people of Israel were getting People of Israel were over here. Yeah. Yeah. People of Israel would just be like, oh, wow. And then I'd be like, right. right. So we worship the Lord. And okay. So yeah. This. When we come out, you want there and you're there or there? Uh, I think it would make more sense to have the narrators probably next to them. Yeah, let's start pharaohing the Egyptians up here. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. So then, then oh, we can start with the people of Israel, like kind of all right here. Like, okay. And the narrators, like, right Will they be in Can you see me or not? No. No. Okay. Um, I can move the computer just a little bit to adjust. So it's the yeah. See, as soon as we get to right here, the piano is out of the screen. But if they're here, yeah, you just might not That's good. Well, I can like we can have only the narrators here, and then how many narrators do you have? You have one. Hey yo. Right, but what they say? We can just have that one. That one can see the Because it might be less confusing the less we can have to say. Um, I wonder if we could kind of um, be like narrators have to stand right here, but then like they can like be on the steps and just kind of cycle off. So the next person comes with like standing. That's my idea. So I can try to work with this. Okay. The narrators will go to us. <laughs> so you have like a course one here. Okay. So that the microphone stands. Right. So yeah, like have them stand like if you put the mic stand actually mm -hmm. and then just have them doors be put in that. So yeah, okay. put the mic stand right here, then they go a little bit stand. And then when they're done. So, so we can have the others just kind of stand like here and then we're like there. Back there. Yeah, we're on the steps to the So maybe you want to organize them and be like, okay, now come down. Right, right. And then maybe I'll show you the scene. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So how we're gonna do the scene then? We're gonna have it. Just, just walk out. Okay. And then we'll be on this side. Okay, when you flip the seat, I want you to just wrap it kind of like this, and then you can tap it kind of to the Okay, and then I'll wrap this So, right. try to try to No, this one is like the same as the same angular one. So, we have four hits. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Yeah. I'm going to be up here. So I'm going to be up here. And then I can push them up. And then 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 push them up. All of our people. Narrators need to listen to you. People on the stage. And then you see some of the stage. Okay. And then the bell. Okay. And then the bell. 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 And then the bell
And we might have some oh, more yeah. over here. How about that? Okay. So, yeah, then you're sitting right over here. Um, it's Aaron. It's Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, so we'll have the board of music. Like Andrew, Sarah. Oh, Okay. Those are these. Okay. So, Ellen, we'll just have you up to these. Thank you. Out there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, I think we're missing a few, but we need to get started because lunch will be served soon. So um, let's have the Himes family come forward. We're going to start with the story of Isaac. Let me read that here. Or, uh, Jacob. That scared you, didn't it? <laughs> Wait, we didn't practice that one. Okay, Jacob. <clears throat> By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the head of his staff. Now after these things, Joseph, now after these things, now it came to pass, thank you. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told. What is name Joseph? No. Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told. And Jacob took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And Jacob was told. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at Luz, the land of Canaan, and blessed me, and said to me, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and make of you a multitude of peoples, and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, will be to are mine, as Reuben and Simeon are mine, they shall be mine. Your offspring whom you beget after them shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers and their inheritance. But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died beside me on the way. Rachel died beside me in the land of Canaan on the way to Ephrathah. When there were, and I buried her there on the way to Ephrathah. That is Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Jacob's, Joseph's two sons, and said, Who are these? They are my sons, and God has given them in their place. And, Israel, and he said to them, Please bring them to me, and I will bless them. And he brought them near to him, and he kissed them, and embraced them. And Jacob said to, and Joseph, and Israel said to Jacob, and Israel said to Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, but in fact, God has also shown me your offspring. And Joseph brought them from beside his knee, and he bowed down with his face to the earth. And he took, and he took them both, and Ephraim with his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh with his left hand toward Israel's right hand. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on the head of Ephraim, who was the younger, and his left hand on the head of Manasseh, guiding his hands knowingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has fed me all my life long to this day, bless the lad. 
the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads. Let my name be named upon them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And let them grow into a multitude of people in the midst of the earth. Now when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. So he took hold of his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's hand to Manasseh's. But his father refused and said, Oh, and said, and Joseph said, Not so, my father, put your right hand on him. For he is the firstborn, put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he. And his descendants shall become a multitude of nations. So, so he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will bless, saying, May the Lord make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And thus he set Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to, to Joseph, Behold, I am dying, but God will be with you and bring you back to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brothers, which I have taken from the hand of the Amorite with my sword and my bow. <laughs> faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Exodus 1, 22 through 2, 10. <laughs> and Pharaoh said to all his people, Every son that is born, ye shall cast into the river, but every daughter, ye shall save alive. And there went forth a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And she conceived and bare a son. And when she saw that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and docked it with slime and pitch and put the child therein. And laid it in the flat, which is which are by, by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And Pharaoh's daughter came down to wash herself at the river. And her maidens walked along the side of the river. And when she saw the ark, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it and saw the child, and, and when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and fetch, and shall I go and cut the hall to thee, a nurse of the Hebrew women? that she may nurse the child to thee. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And she went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it.
And the child grew. Prompting. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Exodus 1, 22 to 10. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Exodus 2, 11 to 15, and Acts 7, 22 to 29. And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian, smiting in Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And he went out the second day unto his brethren. And behold, two men of the Hebrews should go together. And he said to him that did wrong, Wherefore smite thou like fellow? And he said, Who made thee a prince and judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me, as thou killedest the Egyptian? Then Moses feared him and said, Surely this thing is known. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of the king, and departed into the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Acts 7, 22-29 and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him, and avenged him that was oppressed, and smote the Egyptian. For he had supposed that they, his brethren would have understood how that by his hand God would deliver them out of Egypt. But they understood not. And when he went out on the second day, he would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why strive to be one with another? But, and he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away and said, Who may be a prince and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then Pharaoh sought to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the Based of Pharaoh, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he had begat two sons. Acts 7, 22 to 29. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. Exodus 12, 21 to 33. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out. At the door of your house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass. When ye be come into the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep the service. 
and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed their head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. So did that. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh was up in the night. He and all his servants, all the Egyptians, there was a great cry in Egypt, where there was not a house, where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron that night and said, Rise up and keep you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, where they said, We be all dead in vain. Exodus 12, 21 to 33. <laughs> Participated yet and volunteered to come. Now, I need some more participants. I need some young people. So if you haven't, if you would like to come up and participate, why don't you come up here? This would be for the younger ones. <clears throat> come right up down here, okay? Just stand right here as a group. Right. Stand right here. I'll tell you what to do in just a moment. Okay. Are you going to come? Come and join us here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Anyone else want to join us? So, here's what you do. You can all just go back to your seats, but don't forget who you are. No, if you're in the Exodus 14, then... If you're in the Exodus 14, stay up here. The rest of you go back to your seats, and in a minute, we will have you come up, and then we'll help you. And you all just got good practice coming up, and you know who you are and what your part is. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for catching that, Elia. so we can all hear you. Okay. Are you ready?
By faith, they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp to the Lord Pihakor, between Bigdol and the sea, over against Baal and Baal. Before it shall you encamp by the sea. The Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, Why have we done this? Have we the Israelites go from serving us? And Pharaoh made ready his chariot and took his army with him, and took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and the Egyptians pursued them. And the children of Israel went out with boldness. So the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea beside Pihiroth, before Beelzebub. When Pharaoh came near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians pursued them. All the so they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, what "Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness?" What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is it just not us what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear ye not! Stand still! And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye see today, shall see again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord said to Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Be thou unto the children of Israel, that they go forth. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and the Bible, and the children of Israel to go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I will hold thy heart in the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will give me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, Upon his chair and upon his horses. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten the honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chair and upon his horses. The angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Israel and the host of Egypt. And there was the cloud and the darkness. And it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall of them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watch, the Lord, in the pillar of fire and of cloud, looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they go heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us come before Israel, for the Lord fights against the Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thine hand in the dead, and the 
that the law can come then upon fail, upon all people, upon the chariot, and upon the Lord. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. <laughs> and as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of Pharaoh. Of all the hosts of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked through on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus, God saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Exodus 14. Here's come back now. <laughs> okay, so listen closely. You got everybody? All right, so we need, let's see, the boys. I want the boys to come right here to the front. Okay. And the girls are going to be rest of the people, okay? Actually, we're going to have the, the boys are the priests, okay? You are the priests, all right? And the rest of you are the, let's see, I'm losing my place here. The rest of you are the people. <laughs> oh. You are the armed men. <laughs> All right? And the armed men are going to go around. So you got to listen to what they say. Okay? Because this is the city. This is the city of Jericho. All right? And you have to be marching around the city. All right? I thought about having you go outside and march around the building. That's <laughs> inside the keep we can inside. Leave it up like for you are, are the inhabitants of Jericho, I hate to tell you. Um, okay, so listen, and I will come down and I will help you to know what you're doing. But everyone know the car here? Okay, so you, the, no running. We're just walking and we're going right here. We're not going around that half. Those people do not inhabit the land of Jericho. Those are the Israelites, I guess. Okay. Yeah, you don't want the wall to fall. Okay, so here we go. Um, let me read my passage here. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, and all the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. 
And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass before the ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of Ram's horns before the Lord, went forward, blowing the trumpets, with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them. The armed men were walking before the priests who were blowing the trumpets, and the rear guard was walking after the ark, while trumpets blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about at once. And they came into camp and spent the night in the camp. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, walked on, and they blew the trumpets continually. And the armed men were walking before them, and the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord, while the trumpets blew continually. And the second day, they marched around the city once, and returned to the camp. So they did for six days. On the seventh day, they rose early at the dawn of day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city, and the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall live because she hid the messengers whom we sent. For you, keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted. The trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. Then they devoted all in the city to destruction, both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, and donkeys with the edge of the sword. But to the two men who had spied out the land, Joshua said, Go into the prostitute's house and bring, bring out from there the woman and all who belong to her. As you swore to her. So the young men who had been spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and mother and brothers and all who belonged to her. And they brought all her relatives and put them outside the camp of Israel. And they burned the city with fire and everything in it. Only the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab the prostitute and her father's household and all who belonged to her, Joshua saved alive. And she has lived in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Joshua laid an oath on them at the time, saying, Cursed before the Lord be the man who rises up and rebuilds the city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn shall he lay his foundation, and at the cost of his youngest son shall he set up its gates. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was in all the land. Thank you all, that was great. All right, we have one story left. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. The story of Rahab from Joshua 2, Joshua 6, 22 through 27, and Matthew 1, 5 through 6. And Joshua the son of Nun sent two men secretly from Shittim as spies, saying, Go, view the land, especially Jericho. And they went, and they came to the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab, and lodged them. And behold, men came to the king of Jericho and said, Behold, men of Israel have come here tonight to, to view the search of the land. Then the king of 
Jericho went to Rahab and said, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. But the woman had taken them and hidden them. And she said, Two men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. And uh, at dark, when the gate was about to be closed, they went out. I do not know where the woman went. But pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof and hid them among the flax that she laid in order. So the men went out and pursued them on the way to the Jordan as far as the forest. And the gate was closed after the pursuers had gone out. Now Rahab went up to the roof and said to the two men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you has fallen upon us and that the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea before you on your way out of Egypt. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom you devoted to destruction. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted, and there was no spirit left in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will save me alive. As I have dealt kindly with you, you will deal kindly with my father's house. And give me a sure sign that you will save alive my, my father and my mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will not allow them to be given over to death. And the men said to her, Our life for yours, even to death, if you do not tell this business of ours, then, when the Lord gives us the land, we will deal kindly and faithfully with you. Then she let them out through the window by a rope, for her house was built into the city wall so that she lived in the wall. And she said to the men, Go into the hills, lest the pursuers encounter you, and hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. And then afterwards you may go on your way. And the men said to her, we will be guiltless with respect to this oath of yours that you have made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall tie this scarlet cord in the window through which you have led us down. Then you shall gather your father and brother, your brothers and all your household. Then if anyone goes out from the door of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his head. We will be guiltless. But if a hand is laid on anyone who is with you in your house, we, then this blood shall be on our men. But if you tell this business of ours, we will be guiltless with respect to your oath that you made us swear. And she said, According to your words, so be it. Then she sent them away, and they departed. Then and they, she tied the scarlet cord in the window. Then they departed and went to the hills and remained there three days until the pursuers returned. And the pursuers searched all along the way and found nothing. <laughs> then the men returned and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and they told him all that had happened to them. And they said to him, Truly the Lord has given all the land into our hand, and also all the inhabitants of the land melt away because of us. Then Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. But Joshua said to the two men who had gone into the land as spies, Go into the prostitute's house, and bring out from there the woman and all who belong to her, as you swore to her. So the men went in, and brought out right out, and her father, and mother, and brothers, and all who belonged to her. And they brought them, all her relatives, and put them outside the camp of Israel. And they burned the city with fire. And, 
everything in it. And but the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and of iron they saved and put it into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab the prostitute and her father's household and all who belonged to her, Joshua saved alive. And she has lived in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to Jericho. And Joshua laid an oath on them that day, saying, Cursed before the Lord be the man who rises up and rebuilds this city, Jericho. At the cost of his firstborn shall he lay its foundations, and at the cost of his youngest son shall he set up its gates. And the Lord was with Joshua, and his way fame was in all the land. Now, Boaz was the son of Salmon by this same Rahab. And Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth. And Obed was the father of Jesse. And Jesse was the father of David the king. And from David came the Christ. our recitations. That was wonderful. Let's give everyone a round of applause. Now, not too many people in the world have heard from memory the whole book, all of the recitations of those stories. What a blessing. Isn't the Word of God wonderful? Amen. It is exciting. And you know what? One of the things that I'm really desiring to see more of in the church, in the people of God, is passion for Jesus. And I appreciate everyone's involvement in this. What a wonderful thing to see people who are excited about the word of God. Uh, what an encouraging thing. So thank you all for encouraging me and one another. I know that's been a, a great thing to, to be a part of this weekend. So, okay, let me give some instructions. We are going to have uh, lunch here very soon. Um, my wife went to pick up some Chick-fil-A nuggets. So we have chicken, pulled chicken barbecue sandwiches. We have Chick-fil-A nuggets and we have some sides. So you'll get your, your choice of what you would like or a little bit of both. Um, I think some people are helping to serve. So um, she should be back. It'll be just a few minutes, but we will go ahead and pray, and then after we get back from lunch break, I'm going to do my teaching on the two covenants in the book of Hebrews. I'm not going to let that go off the screen because I don't want to lose it. But at least Joey's here, so if I do, I know he can get it back for me. Um, and then after that, we have round three of the scripture challenge rounds, and we have rapid fire rounds, and then after that, we will have... Um, Elliot was going to work on a highlights video, but she said, I don't maybe have enough pictures. So we may get some of that. If not, she's going to work on that and send that out. We're going to do a cleanup here, and then we're going to head over to the park. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that here shortly. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and stand, and we'll have a word of prayer. I'm going to see if Dan, Brother Dan Ons, would lead us in, in prayer for a meal and just thank you. Lord, for all that he's given us this weekend. Absolutely. Let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father, God, uh, uh, you are uh, an amazing God who is gracious and uh, steadfast and loving kindness. And we just bow before you and praise your holy name. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your people who uh, love your word. God, grow in each of us in, in, in love with you and in your word and a desire to know you and make you known. And, um, just thank you for this weekend, God, and the time, the fellowship of the saints. Lord, what a blessing it is centered around your word. Thank you for your provision for us in that. 
Thank you for your provision for us in, in this food to come. Uh, may uh, our, our taste buds praise you as we uh, eat this food. And uh, thank you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, a few minute break until Heather gets back, and then we'll make an announcement, and then we'll get on to eating. Okay. All right. No. Yeah, I think she will. Does she need help carrying stuff in? 